A new language model learning technique just dropped and it made a huge jump in the AGI benchmarks. So I'm gonna break it all down for you and I'm gonna show you why this might be another lever that we can pull to scale and potentially reach AGI. Let me start from the beginning before I get into the research paper. It's kind of crazy to think about, but the O1 family of models came out just two months ago and O1 unlocked something incredible. By giving models the ability to think, to take their time, to not give you the first thing that they predict, but rather to use chain of thought to actually think through problems in a longer period of time, whether that's seconds or minutes or hours, OpenAI showed us that by throwing more compute at test time or inference time, models can become much more intelligent. And then, as I said, O1 showed us, well, we can now scale up post-training time. We can scale up during inference time. And it turns out there's actually something else we can do, which is kind of in the middle of training and test time compute. And it is called test time training. And it is exactly like it sounds. So let's take a look. So I want to thank Slow Developer for sharing this research paper. This is how I found it. And we had this massive jump in the ARC prize where this new paper was able to achieve 61.9% on the ARC prize. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the ARC prize, let me show that to you really quickly. So I know there's a lot of benchmarks out there and it seems like those benchmarks are just getting absolutely destroyed by new models nowadays. They are passing with flying colors. There are a ton of different benchmarks, math and science and writing and reading comprehension and coding and everything in between. But really, how do you define artificial general intelligence? And that is what the ARC Prize aimed to do. And I think they've done it quite well. So let me just read this really quickly. ARC Prize is a million dollar public competition to beat and open source a solution to the ARC Prize. AGI benchmark. And so it is testing for AGI. And how it does that is by generalization. And that is artificial general intelligence. So what they do is they give you a few examples, which for the most part should be simple for humans to complete. And then they say, okay, based on these examples, how would you transform this seven by seven grid into what the output should be? So as we can see here on the left in the examples, we have three blue dots in the shape of an L and then invert that and we have three blue dots right there. Then the output, this is the example, we have a dark blue dot that essentially fills the three to make it four and a square in both. So if we come over here, Logically, it's pretty easy to figure out as a human. We basically just put a dark blue square in each of these, and then that would be the right answer. Well, it turns out large language models and artificial intelligence in general really struggle with this. And it's generalization. It's saying, hey, here's something that I'm teaching you. Now use that to complete this problem. Now, so far, the top score on the leaderboard is only 42% by Ryan Greenblatt. And different approaches have been taken. You could basically use any approach you want as long as you open source it and show what you've done. And so 42% is the best. And I will say that the average human score on these types of tests is about 60%. And the best human score is nearly 98%. So that kind of gives you a baseline as to where we are with artificial intelligence. And now with this new technique of test time training, it was able to achieve the average human score. All right, so enough talk. Let me show you what they've actually accomplished. So here's the research paper. It is out of MIT, and it is called The Surprising Effectiveness of Test Time Training for Abstract Reasoning. So I read through this whole thing. I highlighted the most interesting bits, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about right now. So it starts out in the abstract with language models often struggle with novel problems requiring complex reasoning. And by novel problems, they mean, hey, you have this quote unquote built in intelligence. Now use that intelligence and I'm gonna give you a new problem that you haven't seen, but you should be able to infer how to solve based on your existing knowledge. And most of the time it can't. And the ARC prize is the perfect example of that. But they have shown that their new technique called test time training is very effective, getting 60%. And if you remember, going back to the current top score of about 42%, that is a drastic improvement. So what is test time training? It basically means updating model parameters temporarily 
during inference. If you've been following along with AI over the last couple of years, you've probably heard of LoRa's. LoRa is low rank adaptation, and it's just a really lightweight and efficient way to fine tune models. And that is the technique they use to basically fine tune models during test time or during inference time. So the core concept is LoRa is a method that allows efficient customization of pre-trained neural networks by training only a small number of parameters while freezing the original model weights. We've seen LoRa's with text to image models. We've seen LoRa's with large language models. So they've been around, they work really well. So they used this new test time training against the ARC prize. And again, they got amazing results. Let's keep going. So there are three crucial components for test time training. One, initial fine tuning on similar tasks. So the model has to be capable in itself before the test time training even happens. Then next, auxiliary task format and augmentations. How do we actually generate the data to then fine tune the model with? And three, per instance training. And based on this technique, they have seen a 6x improvement in accuracy compared to the base fine-tuned models. For example, applied to an 8 billion parameter language model, they achieve a 53% accuracy on the ARC's public validation set, improving the state of the art by nearly 25%. And that's an 8 billion parameter model, a relatively small model. And I know I've said this a million times, small models are getting so good, especially when we have all of these other techniques that we can throw at them. I really like small models that are really efficient that I can run on my computer. And so here is the gist of the problem with today's large language models. They excel at performing tasks that occur in their training data. So the stuff that they were trained on and often elementary variations or compositions of those tasks. So very small differences. So if a model knows one plus one equals two, it probably will also know one plus two equals three. But if you give it a vastly different math problem, it probably won't know how to do that. But can LMs also solve new problems involving non-trivial reasoning planning or string manipulation of a kind very different from their pre-training data? And that is where test time training comes in. They don't need to know these things. They could actually generate data based on these new novel problems, train itself, and then solve them. For complex and novel tasks, it is often difficult to obtain a correct answer simply by sampling from an LM. However, a significant finding in recent years has been that LM performance can be substantially improved by augmenting LM decoding with additional test time computation. Now that is not test time training. Test time computation is what we previously talked about with the O1 models, giving it time to think using chain of thought and other techniques. So methods in this category include chain of thought, which we talked about, sampling with majority voting, code execution, and search, giving models additional tools to think and research on their own, all of which has been available using agents, but now they're kind of getting built into the models themselves. But now we have test time training, which updates through explicit gradient steps based on test time inputs. This method differs from standard fine tuning as it operates in an extremely low data regime, basically very light fine tuning. And so it can be done at inference time, at test time. And so what they have found is this. These results challenge the assumption that symbolic components are strictly necessary for solving such complex tasks. Instead, they suggest that the critical factor in solving novel reasoning problems may be the allocation of proper computational resources during test time, perhaps independently of whether these resources are deployed through symbolic or neural mechanisms. So basically, again, being able to scale up compute at different points in the language model life cycle. So how does it actually work? Let me show you that. So test time training enables parametric models to adapt during inference through dynamic parameter updates. I know that sounds very complex, but it basically just means it's updating itself based on the problem it sees. The model leverages the test data structure to improve its prediction. So starting with initial model parameters, so the fine-tuned kind of frozen in time model, for each test input, so the problem, we first generate training data. Now, what does that actually mean? That means that they're taking the problem and they're creating lots of different variations of it and then using all of that training data to fine tune itself in a really light way using a LoRa. We then optimize these parameters to minimize a loss function, producing temporarily updated parameters for prediction. 
So it updates itself for that problem. And then when it gets to the next problem, it just erases all of that and goes back to that base model and does that process again. So it's very dynamic at inference time. And after generating predictions, the model is restored to the original parameters for the next instance or batch. Thus, test time training trains a specialized prediction model for each test input obtained by fine tuning a base model on a test time data set generated from the test input. So here it is, this is the original test task and they give four examples, one of which they say, okay, solve this last one. So they actually give three complete examples and then they give the actual problem and then they're waiting for the solution. Then from that, they drop the problem without a solution and generate more of these leave one out tasks. Then they use geometric transformations to change it and basically just create a lot more training data or examples. Then they put all of those together and use it for the fine tuning data. But that's not it. They didn't just do test time training. They actually actually came up with other augmentation methods as well. So let's take a look at that. So first, augmented inference. Recent work has shown that scaling test time compute can significantly improve the performance of language models. That's what we've been talking about with 01. One of the most common techniques is to sample multiple responses and then selecting the best response using a ranker. So come up with a bunch of different examples and we're going to have a judge determine which one is best. However, while sampling is very effective in domains with multiple possible solutions, so coding, or multiple possible paths to the final answer with math, it can be detrimental when generating answers directly where there's only really one answer, as there is no way to directly enforce diversity across samples while ensuring coherence within samples. As an alternative to inference time scaling, we use augmented inference, which generates multiple prediction candidates by using geometric transformations like inversion, and then is combined with a greedy decoding scheme. Basically just creating a lot of different variations of the same problem to give the model a lot more knowledge. They also came up with ensembling predictions or a voting strategy. So this approach involves two stages of voting to progressively narrow down the best candidates. First, by selecting the most frequent predictions within each transformation, and then by conducting an overall vote across transformation specific candidates to identify the top two most frequent predictions. So this is very common. Come up with a bunch of examples, vote on which one is best. And they actually do that in multiple iterations. All right, so let's look at the scores now. All of that aside, what were they actually able to accomplish? So what we see here is that using the TTT method, test time training, a fine-tuned language model based on this new BARC technique, B-A-R-C, and the program synthesizer of Bark, you could see that they were able to achieve a score of 61.9, beating the average human score of 60.2. Now the best human, 97.8. So you can see some of these new techniques are really pushing the boundaries of what's possible using smaller models and throwing a bunch of compute at it post training. So that's it. That is the gist of this paper. I'm going to drop a link to the paper in the description below if you want to check it out in full. This is fascinating to me. And I feel like since we've essentially run out of public data that we can train models on, we're really limited in how much more we can scale training time within the context of new data. Now, of course we have synthetic data, but the other option rather than just creating synthetic data, which really hasn't been proven, is to be able to do a lot more with the existing data that we have. And Sam Altman talked about that months ago, right? We either have synthetic data, to continue scaling, or we just do more with the data we have. And this is an extension of doing more with the data that we already have. And I really think that this is going to be the key to reaching AGI according to the ARC Prize. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.